Welcome everyone. This is Hype Talk TV. I am your host, Alessandro, here with the Space Monkey. What is up, Space <laughs> Monkey? Hi, Monkey. Happy, excited to be on. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. So, how's it going in quarantine right now? It's kind of hard getting bananas right now because the farms are running out and they're throwing away all the foods because you know they don't have nowhere to sell their stuff. Monkey, try hoard. Make sure stocked up, but. Get, get worried when run low. <laughs> so how did you become a monkey? How? Monkey grew up Canadian jungle, but adopted by NASA and transferred CSA. And they, they helped tra tra train monkey. <laughs> and is that true that you know jujitsu and karate? Yes, yes. At facility, we train in case encounter, encounter problems in space. You must know self-defense. You've been wrestling for how many years? Five years, correct? But five and a half. 2014, right? <laughs> wow, that's short. Uh, and when did you come up? When did you realize you wanted to become a, a wrestler? Whoa, monkey. Oh, uh, th th one sec. Have this. It helped monkey talk, but not, not, not comfortable. Okay, okay. So not always wear. I'll, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Just take your time. <laughs> but Monkey, like, watch wrestle. Scientists at lab watch wrestling. So Monkey watch one little. Always, always fan. Cool, cool. <laughs> there. Clearer? Better? Better, better, better. All right. You can hear okay, me now. Okay, so explain, explain that. Uh, how so, did you become a... When I was young at the lab, the scientists would always watch wrestling. I loved it. So get to see everyone jumping around, fighting each other. It reminded me of home before I got adopted. And just the freedom to do whatever. And show always always fun seeing good guys versus bad guys. Cool. And that, that's what made me fall in love with wrestling. And I wanted to be a wrestler. And I didn't really happen until one of my missions to space. And uh, it's kind of weird, but I met some moonshins who helped train me. And I don't talk about it too much, but uh, that's how it started. It kind of formed me. I don't know. Sort of like, I guess, comparable to Fantastic Four, when the cosmic <laughs> rays transformed them. <laughs> so in a similar sense, that happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I remember that movie. So tell me a little, little about uh, your space adventures. Uh, I just... Mostly scouting. I, I didn't like it too much because it's so cold. I prefer the heat, you know, warm climate of a jungle. I hate cold space. Damn, too bad the too bad NASA didn't keep me. I'm stuck with the CSA in Canada. Well, I was when I was still working with them. And mm -hmm. it's, just, it's nice there sometimes, you know, half the year. The other half, it's so cold. <laughs> so talking about that, you have a teammate and you guys are called the Space Pirates. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I met Shane Saber when we when I was starting out wrestling in the Toronto area, and we had a lot of fun matches together. Really good, really competitive, close back and forth. And one day we, I crash landed one of my final missions in Lake Ontario. That's where he rescued me in his ship, not spaceship, but pirate ship. And yeah. that, that's where we formed the, the partnership. Decided to go out <laughs> together. Conquer some tag team gold the last few years. We At one point, we had three titles at once. And it's been a lot of fun. He's very talented, very under underrated, I think. Uh, and what year did you guys start tag teaming? It would be two years ago. I think we had, besides some random tags a few years ago, uh, we formed Space Pirates March 2018. We did a show in Montreal called LD LDDC, and that was our first official match as the Space Pirates. Okay, awesome. And which promotions have you wrestled for? Uh, Alpha One, Black Label Pro. We're currently the... F oh, we just lost the Freelance Tag Team Championships the, the <laughs> last show before the quarantine. Damn home records. And uh, we're currently the Demand Lucha Tag Team Champions in Toronto. And mm -hmm. where else? We've been Montreal. Uh, yeah, 
Hamilton, Toronto, Chicago, uh, Crown Point, Indiana. We went to Jeffersonville, Indiana, uh, Glory Pro in St- near St. Louis, just all over. The last two years, trying to get so, as many matches with him, more than singles. Uh huh. So you're from Canada? Yes. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. And uh, you guys have like a whole healthcare system. And how how um, how are they uh, helping you guys in the quarantine? Uh, government has issued like a Canadian emergency response benefit for people who are not able to work four straight weeks in a row. So we can get some money to help out with groceries and like bills, like, you know, keep the power on. And so that's, it's a big help for, unless some of my friends have office jobs and they can work from home which mm-hmm. is lucky they still are able to work. Some people still have to go into work depending on what they do. But for the most part, everyone's just stuck home every day. I'm working out and playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you've been doing. <laughs> yeah. And eating. You haven't, you haven't, need, you haven't had any uh, bookings recently, right? No empty arena matches, nothing. No, no. Uh, no. That's mainly all indie wrestling has been canceled. Only con- people who are under contract still might still have something like that for them. For the bigger type of promotions. Right? Yeah, like yeah. Impact uh, and, and, up, WA. and and end up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, WA, and obviously WWE and AEW. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And what are your favorite matches? Wait, actually, before I say that, <laughs> uh, has AEW hit you up for one of their darks where they have like a bunch of local talent to wrestle or no? No, not yet. Have they? Not yet. They haven't come through Canada yet, have they? No, 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 no. I guess, they should. Uh, I think they. I think they will in the end of by the end of this year or next beginning. I, I guess. At least when the borders open. Cause they they do a lot of good ratings in uh, TSN or wherever they're on in uh, in the channel stations out over there in Canada. Yeah, I'm based between near Toronto and Buffalo, so those two major cities I'm close to, and if they come through any of those, I'd. Easily can make it to to them. That'd be a lot and of there, fun. And there's more diehard fans, wrestling fans in Canada more than USA. You think so? For sure. Yeah, I think so. Because I know a lot of people in the internet that are all from Canada and they're all mainly oh. wrestling fans, you know? Oh, cool. So I don't know if it's just a me thing, but that's <laughs> what I'm seeing so far. Either and, the people uh, you know or just that's how it is. <laughs> coincidence, yeah. And uh, any, you have any favorite matches of like when you were growing up? Of watching, oh, you know, I can talk about my favorite wrestlers. This might be easier. Like yeah, when okay. I think of favorite Start matches, favorite matches, I go back to like TLC with the Hardys, Edge and Christian Dudleys, mm-hmm. and then a couple years later, the Triple Threat, the two of them. The first one in 2005 with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels, always one of my favorite. Um, I guess there's RVD to Jerry. Jeff mm-hmm. Hardy, Rey Mysterio, Tina. of course, <laughs> right? From ECW, WWF, E, TNA. Oh, I love the X Division guys. All oh, the like the mid 2000s TNA, so good, so exciting to watch. I, that's who I try to be like. Yeah, like the main event mafia. I remember that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And that was pretty dope. Uh, and any favorite matches of yourself, mm. like that you've done in so far in your career? I had a. If any. Yeah, I'm just trying to narrow it down. I think one of my favorite matches was. Alpha One runs a show called The Purge every. usually in July. And they've been doing it the last few years. And hopefully everything will be up and running by this July and they could do it again. But it's every single match, anything goes, kind of ECW style. That's and awesome. Yeah, except last year was it last year two years ago my tail got skewered <laughs> which oh, was very painful <laughs> but i got my revenge by rolling putting some double t- sided tape around it rolling it in thumbtacks and tail whipping my opponent for the finish kind of like bianca belair how she does with her hair <laughs> yeah yeah tail whipping <laughs> my finish since i started it's very strong <laughs> except when people stomp it it really hurts <laughs> And no one has kicked out of out of that finisher, right? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet, not yet. 
Uh, and I see that you're friends with uh, Ethan Page. Tell me, what are your thoughts on him? Jerk. Jerk? <laughs> uh, I've learned a lot from him. He started wrestling nine years before me. So he, since uh, we live kind of close, we travel together. That's why we see each other, you know, from New York to Chicago to, you know, all That's over. Cool. And I've just sold the car rides with him. He's helped me out a lot and helped me get better, get better quickly. So, and I've, and I enjoy knowing him as well in the car, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> and some of my favorite matches are against him. We might have tagged like once in some multi, like six man tag, but usually we're wrestling each other at different promotions all around. And we've had one of I was going to mention one of my favorite matches was a Falls Count Anywhere match with him, and he happened to choke me out on the stage. Oh my um, God. And that was the first time in my life I was actually choked out. Oh, brutal. He, <laughs> so if you want to hear about it, was at Freelance, I think it was May 2017 or 18, I think 2017. He we got fought up onto the stage, he had me in my stomach in like a camel clutch. He had my tail around my neck, and I was trying wow. to fight it. I couldn't get my fingers in, and I felt the choke just getting tighter. I tapped on the carpet. It was just on this oh. hardwood stage with carpet <laughs> on top. And as I tapped, he, he let go. That's when I went out just like that. Like, I didn't realize how tight it was around me. I'm like, oh, I, I can't hold on any longer. I tap. I hit the floor. 10, 15 seconds later... I open my eyes, I hear his mm-hmm. music, I see him down on the stage, or just off the stage, putting his arms up, and I'm like, did I just get choked out? Oh Holy my god, crap. you passed out? <laughs> just, it was like, it's just short, like it came quick, and from training jujitsu, I've seen other people get choked out, I've accidentally choked someone out before because they didn't tap right away, and like I let go, yeah. I've choked a friend out, he, oh, the one time I choked my friend out. He charged me. We're, it's like a birthday party in the backyard. And he charged me. And I, he's wow. like, let's wrestle. Because he knew, knew I trained. And he charged me. And I grabbed him. And then normally, like he does that before. And I would, he would tap. But uh-huh. he wasn't tapping. He was struggling. So I put it a little bit tighter. He was struggling. I put it a little bit tighter. And then he stopped. I let go. And he started snoring on my lap. That's when I'm, and I sat him up. He, was, he woke up five seconds later. He's like, I'm good. <laughs> so this reminded wow. me of that. Uh, this is the first time I've ever told the story on in an interview. <laughs> but so when Ethan Page choked me out, I hear the music. I see him celebrating. I'm just like, I just got choked out. And then there's like a small bruise on my cheek just from hitting the carpet. <laughs> Super <laughs> but hard. After, yeah. After a, just only like, you know, a little doing like a cobra stretch and then falling floor, like getting stretched and then getting let go. But as I, like, I was normal, nothing happened, nothing, no concussion or anything, nothing bad with my head, but it was no just protocol. very, sup- no, it was like a quick nap, it felt like. So and no one was, noticed besides you? No, it, I guess people just thought I was relaxing <laughs> selling. from, like, yeah, like, I, I, yeah, selling, yeah, I tapped, and I was just down, just waiting for him to leave, but I, I was actually out until I looked around and realized what happened. Oh, was that, that, was, was, that was crazy. Was that the hardest ring you've ever wrestled in, or? Uh, that so it was Falls Crown anywhere. So there was a ring in the building, but we went around everywhere. Oh, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got took a lawn dart into a wall, um, like and he ran from one end of the building to the other and lawn darted me. But luckily, I got guy. my yeah yeah. He's so uh, got like a hundred pounds on me, maybe, and um. Yeah, and we fought everywhere. We made it up onto the stage. I almost got power bombed off. I remember I hook kicked him. I tried to tail whip him. That's where I think he low blowed me, and then he put in the submission on the stage. Yeah, <laughs> that was That's one of my most story. fun matches. What <laughs> and a story. Uh, yeah, what a finish! <laughs> what an ending! So I see uh, you're wearing a Zelda shirt. Uh, you play video games? Lots, lots. I have lots a PS4 and a Switch. Currently don't have my PS4 with me. I've just been staying with a friend during this quarantine, not at my home base, but brought my Switch. So I've been playing some Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Mario Party, some Fortnite. Uh, my wrestling friend, wrestler friend Trent Gibson, we've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Not so much the last two weeks, but we played for about 
almost two months from like the start of the quarantine or right before it started uh-huh. and just just still playing online together which is nice you know someone to talk to <laughs> just talk about movies <laughs> yeah, or exactly. whatever's going on you don't want to go insane or depressed in this time <laughs> yeah yeah if you're alone it's it's hard yeah ex- exactly it's super hard you need that's why some people have moved back with their families and all that mm-hmm. Yeah. And you you watch any like cartoons or nothing like that like anime or anything? Yeah. Um. What am I watching right now? Uh, I'm still catching up on One Piece. I started watching that four years ago. Haven't finished. <laughs> um. Know, it's gonna take a while to finish. There are like there were like 800 episodes four years ago. Now there's over 900. Um, yeah, it's insane. Having caught up on this season of My Hero Academia. That started in October. I fell behind on a lot of my shows this past year, but I have some time to catch up now. Lately, I've been doing a lot of, like, editing, uh, photo editing, and just some graphics for some videos. I started streaming on Twitch. I did a test run last week, and it was a little choppy, so I made a software change. And still need to update some things before I start doing that regularly, but that'll be coming. You know, just hang out while I game, and I'll do some workout follow-alongs, too. It should be fun. Just talk it's, to people. It's, it's crazy because One Piece has been out for such a long time. When I was yeah. in middle school, I, I began watching it and reading the manga and all that, and it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Longest running anime, I think. And I checked because I, I still have like the old mangas and they have like the dates and all that. And it was like 2009, 11, and all that. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think it started in 99. Yeah, that was like the year after I was born. <laughs> if you if you want me to say that, but yeah, that's cool. That's cool that you're keeping busy during this time because you don't want to get bored or anything or turn crazy, cabin no. fever. Yeah, Just didn't do nothing exactly. all day. <laughs> and so, tell me a little about uh, for your future in five to four years from now, I guess. Uh, where do you want to see yourself doing? What are your goals? Uh, you know, when I started wrestling. One of my goals was PX Division Champion. Nice. And at some point, I would still like to do that. I don't know. You know, when I start, also when I started, I'm like, ah, maybe I'm too small to be in WWE. But since then, the Cruiserweight Division opened up. It's launched. Yeah. And give hope for small guys like me, you know, who can't get bigger without help. <laughs> uh, this, I just, my, my main goal, which I have done, I, I've wanted to travel with wrestling and two years ago i went to the uk for a first time uh last year i got brought i was brought to japan for ddt for the month and going all over the u.s and canada i'd love to wrestle in mexico you know maybe i should like they probably love you i love comedy and high flying like my favorite person maybe of all time is jackie chan for his action and comedy and maybe if I do a little bit more of the high flying that I am capable of, instead of just, I don't know, just have more different types of matches with different types of people so I can have some variety and then they can see, yeah. different places can see that I can do different things. Sometimes uh, I, I tend to do you know something similar. I'll have some comedy, a little bit of my flying, but I can do a lot more. I just need to actually do it, think of it think of the things I want to do before I go out there. Yeah, cool. And uh, you see now that kind of like wrestling has kind of shifted to like more, they're kind of embraced. Now people are more embraceive to uh, comedy wrestling and all these entertaining out of the blue moon type of characters that are crazy, like Orange Cassidy, yourself, uh, who else? Um, there's a lot of them. To na- Dan Housen. Name off my head. Yeah, Dan Housen. All those people. Yeah. How how is that like? Now you're in the time that anything could basically be over. Oh, it's great. Like I've been, I I got lucky that I got popular quick, and it helped me travel right away when I started wrestling. And I just keep trying to get better, keep trying to add new stuff. And what I avoided when I started wrestling was doing any sort of like martial arts. Besides, like, maybe, like, a spinning hook kick or head kick here and there, like, a roundhouse or something. Uh, I'd like to start adding more because I have this knowledge. Like, I trained for so many years before, but when I started wrestling, I'm like, 
I just want to wrestle. I just want to do lucha. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, maybe I can start with that, start with something else, you know, throw some variety in my matches, do things that I do know, even though ah, I do a little bit differently, but, you know, do things my way. Your way is yeah. the best way. You That's know right. That. And, <laughs> uh, and by the end of your career, what do you want to be recognized as? Ah. Uh. When everything's said and done and you're retired, you're in your lawn chair, old. <laughs> I, I, I said this a few times. I haven't said it in a while, but I said I want to be the Canadian Liger. The Canadian I want to wrestle for the next 20 years doing flips and crazy stuff still until I'm old monkey. Well, he retired at what age again? I think it was 70, uh, right? Was he 70? I think he was 70, I think. I'm not too sure, but... This he year, he old. retired... Yeah, and he started in, what, 88 as Liger? You I, gotta I, remember, there was two Ligers. You know that? There was Super Liger, who was Chris Jericho for a little bit, I think. And then there was him, Jushin Thunder Liger. Uh, so. Well, yeah, Jushin Thunder Liger. I think he wrestled as something else for, like, five or six years. I, I remember only, hearing... I think. Yeah, since, like, 82 or 3. And then 88, he started... He became Jushin Thunder Liger, so and you know, his 31 was, years. And a fun fact here, his character was based on an anime in Japan that was popular, I think. Oh, well, yeah? Yeah, it was. It was true. It's true, not, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, he looks like a Power Ranger. <laughs> yeah, he was like a, dra- it was a dragon, I think. And yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, you want to be want to be known as kind of like an iconic figure like that, like Jushin Thunder Liger? Yeah, yeah. Even, like, he... he so for North American equivalent, even if I never get to WWE, but I just want to, I love wrestling. I just want to keep wrestling for as long as I can, keep traveling for as long as I can. I'm just trying to stay healthy, eat healthy, exercise so I can do all the things that I can still do and not wake up so sore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. These bumps are crazy. Yeah. Uh, and you have any shout outs? You have any merch, plugins? Yeah, uh, all my social medias are at PW Space Monkey, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, old slash PW Space Monkey. Uh, I have Pro Wrestling T Store slash PW Space Monkey and the new store um, on StreamElements.com slash PW Space Monkey. And you can find my store there. And I have some items there that are not available on my Pro Wrestling Tees. So I just launched that two days ago. And you can check that out. I have some stickers now. And my Banana Club shirt is finally available online. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there's a link. So on twitch.tv slash pwspacemonkey, you will have, if you just scroll down, a graphic with all my links, if you're curious. That's the one to go to to see everything else. Awesome. I'll, I'll put the links down in the description and all that, and I'll probably put it on my Instagram as well. Thank uh, you. And do you have do you have any message for your fans? I cannot wait for this to be over and just to see you all again and hang out again. I you know I put a short video the other day. Like I, I miss wrestling, being in the ring, but I miss at intermission after my match, just going out and talking to people. Or after the show, just people saying, oh, I enjoyed your match, or hey, thanks for coming back. I'm like, I just, I enjoy making people happy. So if I can do something that makes someone laugh in my match, like make the crowd laugh, make someone slip on a peel or whatever, or do some flips and make people go, ooh, I, I just enjoy getting a reaction for people, making them feel good. And I just can't wait to do that again. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. So that's a perfect way to end on a good high note on this interview. Uh, This has been Hype Talk TV with Space Monkey and me, Alessandro. And go check them out on everything. I'll put the links and all that down in the description. Um, And keep updated with him because he's going to come out with a bang once quarantine is over. And yeah, thank you so much for giving me your time, Space Monkey. And see you uh, you next time, I guess. (laughs) This was fun. Thank you. See you. you so much.